I'm Victoria McLean and welcome to my channel. Now I did a little bit of a poll on my channel a couple of days ago asking what would you guys like to see me cover and I think 53% of you said my rare collectibles. Now the rest was split between unboxings, Q&As and what was the other thing? Trivia. Um, but the winner was my collectibles. Now today I'm going to talk to you about books. Now you might not like that subject but let's face it Harry Potter started with just one book. So if you'd like to see what's in my collection then keep on watching. If you would like me to bring Hogwarts to you then why not subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. Now I did a Q&A a few weeks ago where you sent me questions and I answered them. It was the Ask Victoria Anything or Ask Me Anything, a little kind of a video um, after I did an interview with Scott Mills from BBC Radio 1. And one of the questions was, one, where did I start my collection? And two, do I have a copy of a Welsh Harry Potter book? Now I'm going to answer these questions now. I'm a bit excited actually because I don't think I've done all of these books in a video before. I've shown my collection before, but this is different. So the first thing I'm going to show you is my first ever Harry Potter item. It started off with just one book and it was this one. This is the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Smarties edition that was released in 2001. Now it was 5 99 from a shop called Otikers back then. I lived in Telford at the time and I was pregnant with my eldest boy, Daniel. And this was the first book. Now this is a first edition and they are worth between maybe 100, 150 pounds now. However, this one has been read and dog-eared so many times that I doubt I would get anything for this book. But this was the first Harry Potter item and it has been completely and utterly loved to death. I tell you now, it has been read and reread. It's amazing to think that my collection uh, my, my Guinness World Record, my social media coverage, everything has be been because of this book. It's just crazy to think that, that it started with this one book. It's just mental, absolutely mental. Okay, so another question was, do I have a Welsh edition, because I am Welsh, do I have a Welsh edition in my collection? Now the answer is, Yes, how could I be a Welsh person and not have a Welsh edition Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? I don't read a word of Welsh. Um, unfortunately, I can understand more Welsh than I can actually speak, but I do have a Welsh first edition Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, and I'm really proud of that. Um, I think I paid about £40 for this. Um, this is dated, this was released, so it obviously must be, it would have been much later than the actual release date. This is dated, this is 2000, so it's three years after the original Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was released. So that's pretty good, I think, and how you can tell that it is a first edition. You can see the numbers there, starting one on the right-hand side, and it ends in 10 on the left-hand side. Now, this is how you can tell a British book is a first edition, and each time you go up, first se edition, second edition, third edition, the first number on the right hand side will disappear. I will show you an example now. Now sadly I do not own a first edition Philosopher's Stone, that is as most collectors will tell you, the holy grail of Harry Potter collections. Um, I only know of a handful of people that actually have one, however I did help a lady sell one to somebody I used to know quite a few years ago, I didn't know them back then, but this lady was selling her first edition that her daughter had bought in a charity auction I think it was, or a charity sale for the library and uh, she bought it and she sold it back then for £1,500 and it, was, it wasn't it was in good condition and yet it still went for £1,500. That was about seven or eight years ago. Now, this is probably the closest I have to a Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone first edition. This is a fourth edition. Now, when I explained to you about the numbers going backwards, so it would be 10 to one from left to right, 10 to one and one, if you see the number one, that means it is a first edition. Now, unfortunately, there is a lot of speculation over the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone books. 
a true first edition, okay, will have, I will show you now, this is not a first edition, so don't, you know, don't get too excited, will have the 10 to 1 here, yeah, 10 to 1 there, okay, so it would start 10 on the left hand side, and it would say 1 on the right hand side, and it would have Joanne Rowling 1997. There are a few little ways that you can tell that you have a first edition. First of all, it doesn't have a, a dust cover. The first edition does not have a dust cover. Second of all, wizard on the back is the young wizard, and on the back of the book, you will see, you'll have writing here, it's not this writing, it's, it's different writing to this, and it has the word philosopher on the back, but the philosopher is spelt wrong. There is actually a letter missing. I can't remember what letter it is, but the letter is missing. Now, in the inside of the book of a first edition, a true first edition, on, the, on his list of items that he has to take to Hogwarts, uh, the wand, scales, cauldron, one size, uh, what is it, one size two pewter cauldron, I think it is. On this page, which is page 53 of a Harry Potter book, on an, uh, a first edition, it would have the word wand printed twice. So you'd have the word wand there and then the word wand down there. I actually have that in this uh, paperback edition, which I don't quite understand why because this is a paperback edition, it should have been corrected by then. So as you can see, you have the word wand up there, and then you have the word wand down there. So if you had those items in a hardback first edition, so first of all, you have to have the numbers reading from 10 to one, from left to right. Joanne Rowling, instead of JK Rowling on the inside page. So you have, uh, you have Joanne Rowling there, so you, but you have that in the first edition. I think Thomas Taylor is actually together, there's no space, so that's another mistake in the book. And then you'd have the, obviously, printed, you'd have the word wand printed twice, and you'd have different writing on the back here, same wizard, but different writing, and the word philosopher is spelt wrong. So those are the list of items that you have to look for if you think you have a first edition. This is the closest I will have to one because this is a fourth edition. Now, if you look inside this, you will see that it says there 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, and it stops at 4. That means it's a fourth edition. So that is how you tell if you have a first edition or not. This is worth about £300. I actually accidentally found this. Um, it was inside a box of books that I picked up for £10 um from a seller on facebook and this was inside it and it's about 300 pound there so it's a well chuffed so hopefully you have learnt a little bit about the first edition and how to know what edition your book is. Now obviously they've released so many Harry Potter books. The series has been released with so many different covers and in so many different languages, it's just crazy. But I don't just have those books in my collection, I also have some really nice items as well. Now a while ago, I actually liked going through a phase, I went through a phase of liking items that were only given out at premieres. Now, I have a few items like that. I have a wand that was handed out at the Harry Potter and Philosopher's, sorry, Sorcerer's Stone premiere in America. I think it's America, I'm not 100% sure. I have a bag that was given to the press before the film was even released. I have posters. I'm sure I have other items, but my brain has gone completely blank. I'm just thinking about the items I've got here to show you. So this item is from Order of the Phoenix. Now, apparently, I don't know much about this, this is the box here, it's a book, but uh, some of you have seen it already in some of my videos. But this was given out, as far as I'm aware, at Order of the Phoenix premiere. Now, I don't know who it was given out to, it's very heavy. But according to sources, there were only about 30 to 40 of these actually handed out. I don't know how true that is, I've only ever seen a handful of them on sale on eBay and places like Instagram people have posted them up because they're trying to sell them. Now this one, I've never seen one like this before, but it, and you never, ever, ever find them together in their box either. So this is a rarity. I think I paid about 30 pound for this, about, oh my gosh, 10 years ago, which is crazy. I, I bought it, not truly understanding what it was. I can't even remember what the listing said, but I liked the set. So yeah, this was quite shocking. As I said, you don't find them together anymore. This is very rare. Now, 
It is absolutely stunning. It is a Hogwarts wooden book and a pen and ink set with Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix in. Now this is such a stunning piece. Now majority of the time when you find these, you find them either the pen uh, on its own in the box or just on its own, or you find the book on its own. Now there are books that look different to this, but they are still part of the set. There's some carved very differently. Now, as I said, this is actually wood. It's got a beautiful metal Hogwarts crest on the front there. And if you open it, sorry, the book is solid and you've got a leather bound spine here, but I think that, that I think that's pleather. As you open it, it's obviously a journal. It has Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix just here, and it's on every single page. It is such a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Um, I, I really couldn't tell you how much they're worth now. I wouldn't have paid more than 200 for this today. However, I could be wrong. If I'm, if I'm right in being told that there are only 30 to 40 of these, then you're looking a lot more. But this is an amazing, amazing item and it's such a beautiful keepsake. Sorry, I keep playing with my extensions because my hair keeps showing underneath. It's so long, it's crazy. Um, but I love my extensions, they're amazing. So much easier, you know, you just clip them in and you're, you're away. <laughs> um, anyway, so this is the pen, okay? I'm impatient, see, I can't wait for my hair to grow. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix there written on the box and then when you open it I've never taken the pen out because I think if I had to take the pen out I would have to break the seal that's actually got it in place you've got ink here in a wax sealed bottle and then the pen is an ink it's, it's an ink it was an ink pen I think that's the best way to put it and it has Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix there the pen is actually wood so it matches perfectly with the journal so that is a Harry Potter premiere beautiful piece. Do you remember after the film's finished, J.K. Rowling wrote um, the Tales of Beadle the Bard book. Now she handcrafted, sorry handcrafted, hand wrote six books for friends and family or people that helped her through the books, through the time of getting the books up. I think it was some, uh, like her sister had one, her editor had one and so on. So she gave them to people who meant the world to her. And you know, uh, J.K. Rowling does a lot for charity, doesn't she? She did seven in total and the seventh one went to Sotheby's for auction and the, um, the money raised went to a children's voice campaign. Now the book apparently sold at Sotheby's for 1.2 million. Now I could be wrong about that amount, but that's the amount that's in my head at the moment. This was the auction catalogue for it from Sotheby's itself. And it's absolutely beautifully made. Just the auction catalogue on its own, it's fantastic. It's got the uh, three brothers on the back there and you can see the Deathly Hallows symbol at the top. And inside, I haven't opened it properly because when it comes to things like this, I don't fully open them because you're gonna start damaging the book itself. I don't know how much these go for now, to be honest. I have no idea. I know they're not cheap. I was lucky to get this when I did. I think I paid about 15 pound for it. And it says on the front there, Tales of Beadle Bard, illustrated from the original runes by J.K. Rowling. And it says, a collection of wizarding fairy tales by J.K. Rowling, Sotheby's, London, 13th of December, 2007. There's only a few years that are before I got married on the 13th of December. It's our lucky number, see? Now, if you open it, it shows pictures of the Tales of Beadle Bard book that J.K. Rowling wrote and drew inside herself. She did it all by hand on parchment the paper was made of parchment and inside it was this this catalog it's very very similar to the parchment itself there's a bit about here about jk rowling and writing the books it says uh, tales of beadle bard is really a distiller distillation dis distillation i'm dyslexic so please bear with me of a the themes found in Harry Potter books and writing it has been the most wonderful way to say goodbye to a world I loved and lived in for 17 years. How crazy is that, isn't it? Because I think she started writing them in 1980, didn't she? The year I was born. Um, so it's mad and of course it says JK Rowling down the bottom there. But it is just such a beautiful, beautiful catalogue and it shows pictures of what she drew as well because all the illustrations inside this Taylor Bar book 
were hand drawn and then it shows the books being made as well which is fantastic I love this. Now, when this sold, it was sold to, oh, let me just read this to you. Six of these books have been, sin, have been given to those most closely connected to the Harry Potter books during the past 17 years. This seventh copy will be auctioned, the proceeds to help institutionalized children who are in dis desperate need of a voice. So to whomever now owns this book, thank you and fair fortune be yours, JK Rowling. Now the book was actually bought by Amazon, which is one of the richest companies in the world. Back then it wasn't the richest company, one of the richest company, but it was getting there. So you can imagine 1.2 million was just pocket change to them. Wish it was pocket change to all of us. And in here you have a picture of JK Rowling at one of the orphanages there visiting a child. Um, such a fantastic story about the fact that she's done this, the reason why she's done this and so on. It shows the design of the book there by the silversmith that was actually based in Edinburgh. So this was the book. This was the auction catalogue for that seventh and final book. Again, seven being the magical number in Harry Potter. Now, Amazon, amazingly, when they bought the book, they actually made those books available to us, the public, the fans. There were 50,000 of them printed and the proceeds went to a children's voice charity. So that was brilliant. I think that might have been part of the deal because I don't think she would have liked it to have been just for profit. Now, when Amazon released their book, I was very lucky. I was one of the ones. I knew exactly what was going on. I'd been watching this for a long time before. As I said, I've been collecting since 2001. So I put a deposit down to have a book or pre-ordered it. And back then it was only 50 pounds. <laughs> only 50 pound but to the first 100 people who pre-ordered the book they got a signed copy of the book by jk rowling a real signed copy of the book now those books are now have now become one of the rarest books you can get in your harry potter collection they are rarer than the harry potter and the philosopher's stone books however they're still not as valuable it's quite crazy isn't it now, Amazon released Tales of Beedle the Bard in this. Isn't that gorgeous? This is slightly damaged, unfortunately, but I have had this for an incredibly long time. Now, the beautiful thing about this is it is not a book. It is a box. And inside the box, it looks like this. So for £50, which I think is a bargain, you get this beautiful presentation box you get collection edition prints by JK Rowling. Again, on the back it says Children's High Level Group. I think that might have been the charity actually, I might be wrong about the other charity, but the Children's Voice was where I first went to. So anyway, these are the limited edition prints. There are 10 prints in this book and every single drawing has been done by JK Rowling. So they're ready to print, ready to frame now if you wanted. And each one has her autograph on absolutely beautiful now i know that there were books out there that you could buy harry put up the tales of beadle Bard books the normal books but they actually didn't have all the illustrations in this one does so you have some fantastic prints here again all drawn look at how beautiful that is all drawn by jk rowling she's so talented absolutely talented pay me treasures of your past and i love that the fountain of fair fortune that is my favorite drawing and then you have a beautiful key. And then that is my second favorite drawing because this girl here just looks so beautiful. She's like a princess. Right, and also you get this. You have JK Rowling's, initial, uh, JK Rowling's autograph in gold lettering. And then inside this bag is a copy, a replica of the Tales and Beedle the Bard book that you could buy at auction for 1.2 million. Now this obviously is not real silver. These are not real moonstones, which the original book would have been, and it was real leather as well. This is pleather. Now this book has not been handwritten by JK Rowling. However, it has her handwriting in it. Um, again, the beginning here, and then it says, translated um, by the original runes, sorry, from the original runes by Hermione Granger, commentary by Albus Dumbledore, introduction notes and illustrations by JK Rowling. And then the charity was Children's High Level Group, Health, Education and Welfare. And down here, remember what I mentioned about the books having the 10 to 1 from left to right, saying it's a first edition? 
there they are, the numbers 10 to 1 and this is the first edition. They did not print these again. So inside you have all the context and then the introduction is actually in her handwriting. This is where I got part of my always tattoo here because this is actually her handwriting. I searched through this book to find it all but it is absolutely beautiful and then it has there down there 2008. And then the Wizard and the Hopping Pot and of course you've got the illustrations in the book and then translations by Ancient Runes at the back, by Ancient Runes, by um, Hermione Granger. And then at the back it says, Amazon's net proceeds from every sale of this book will go to the children's high level group. Net proceeds for sales of this book from Amazon to the United Kingdom are, so are estimated to be 20 per unit. The purchase of this book is not tax deductible. Children's high level group can be contacted at, and then it has the address. So that is an absolutely incredible keepsake. If you can get one of these books, I highly recommend it because the value is only going to increase. At the end of the day, they're never gonna do any books like this again. And it's a beautiful way of remembering the seven books that she wrote for Harry Potter. I think it's safe to say they're not gonna do something like this for Fantastic Beasts. Now there are only two books left in what I'm showing you today. So I hope that you like my choices. Now, the first book was sent to me as a gift, which I was so honored to have received, but it is a advanced potion making book. Now, this is actually not far off the real item, though the real prop that was from the films. This one here is The Notebook by Mina Lima. They did a series of notebooks with um, Harry Potter book covers on the front from the films and obviously it is just a notebook but this is obviously exactly the same as the film because obviously Mina Lima designed the cover. This is the replica that I was sent. Isn't it absolutely beautiful? So obviously this is based on the Half-Blood Prince's version. So it is obviously the one that Snape would have owned. Look at the foiling inside there. Look at it, look at it, look at it. Oh, slash. And you have notes as well so you've got this one here this book is the property of the half-blood prince and it's exactly the same and inside then you have all the notes and apparently on page 10 of your books it is the draft of living death now in the film did you know that there were only 12 pages of the book that were printed with different uh, potions in them and those 12 pages were replicated to create to, over and over again to create an actual book so if you look every 12 pages were the same this book however every single page is different it is incredibly detailed now I think these valued at around 150 to 200 pound when they were first released by my friend and they are absolutely beautiful. They are no longer for sale, I'm afraid. The closest you will get to this book now is getting the notebook from Mina Lima. To be fair though, they are only 12 95 each and they are so worth it. So here we have this incredible, incredible book with so many potions inside it and notes by Snape as well. It is absolutely sensational. Now the last book that I want to show you today is incredible because this one of the, this character is one of my favorites. She's such a beep, but she's still one of my absolute favorites. It is Rita Skeeter and the book is The Life and Lies of Albus Dumbledore. It is so amazing this book. Again, this one was gifted to me as well. I was very 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 lucky to get this. This book is only slightly smaller than the real one because I have actually compared them with the real one, which is currently on display in the Mina Lima shop in London. This is just beautiful. It is so gorgeous. And every now and again, you have a little beetle just there. In case you didn't know, she was a, an unregistered animagus. She was a beetle. That's how she got a lot of her secrets. So this book is actually the full story of Albus Dumbledore and his brother. It even has the pictures in here of Gellert Grindelwald. Um, of course, we have now met him in um, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. This is Albus Dumbledore and Gellert Grindelwald here. And we've got pictures like Dumbledore and Aberforth enjoying each other's company. We have Professor McGonagall back here. How could you not love Professor McGonagall? We have pictures of Harry Potter. We have the fight between Voldemort and Dumbledore, which is one of the most 
my most favourite fights in Harry Potter because it's so well done. We have Aberforth there as well. We have uh, Grindelwald as he's older before he gets killed. We have Ariana Dumbledore, bless her. We have the letter as well to Gallet, signed by Albus with the Deathly Hallows mark. The Mirror of Eris said, it is such an incredible, incredible book. This is so, so, so well made. It is unbelievable. I did start uh, reading it, but I, I kind of gave up halfway through because I'm not good at reading. Being dyslexic is not fun. I love how everything's like the green on the sides and the pink on the front. In fact, when you open it like that, it's underneath, she's there. Then you turn it round and she's there. And then you have, Al you have Dumble Life Lies of Albus Dumbledore down the spine. It is an amazing, amazing book. I am so, so lucky. If you would like me to bring Hogwarts to you, then why not subscribe to my channel? If you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button and also so you don't miss any more of my videos, hit the notification button as well. Until next time, take care. I love you all. I'll speak to you very soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel invite your friends and also like this video and let me know down below in the comment section what did you think of this video what would you like me to cover until then thank you so much take care i love you all and i'll speak to you very soon bye bye